A lot of who we become is something that we are inspired about when we are kids, when we are teenagers, something that becomes our model. And it can be, of course, someone who is in your life as a living person. It might be your family member or good friend or your neighbor or someone at school. At the same time, there is possibility for you to invite person into your life who is an author, someone who wrote the book, someone who created that movie that inspired you deeply. So you will find elements of the book or, or the movie that will feed your vision for yourself. In my case, when I was about five or six, it was a very influential for me to watch Beauty and the Beast. And I think I really embrace those values as seeing beauty despite of the looks. And I think it's really important to have full package. And I went into more detail why I believe in full package as being very important. I also explored the aspect of age that was very related to seeing the beauty in the person despite of the age difference. And I'm talking about that in the podcast episode together with my partner. Because who we are is something that keeps shaping itself by our actions and we become what we do, what we believe in, what we think about, what we practice, all those beliefs that we hold about the world, about ourselves, about what we're doing, where we're going, everything shapes us. Those books that create inspirational, inspirational image of who you can become could serve you as a building block for who you are as a person. For me, the book by Napoleon Hill from 1925, that was before that famous book, Think and Grow Rich, the book from 1925, it's actually collections of his lessons that he was giving at university, from what I remember. So those papers were collected about those lessons he was teaching, and that was called the Law of Success in 16 Lessons. In 2014, I got hold of PDF that you could find back then so easily as PDF, Napoleon Hill, la 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 la. I knew what to look for. So easily I could find the PDF I could download from the internet and I didn't have to subscribe to anything. I didn't have to pay for anything. It was just out there. I don't know how the rights were working back then, but that was easy. So I was inspired to read that after reading the blog, what Tony Robbins was reading or recommending. I don't know if that was true, that this is what Tony Robbins really recommends, but I believed in that. I found that PDF with 16 laws of success by Napoleon Hill from 1925. And during my trip to India, because one of my best friends had a wedding at the time, I thought it's amazing opportunity to just start reading it. And, and it was. 16 lessons on becoming the person who is successful. So those 16 lessons changed my life. For example, when I was reading about persistence, something was happening in my life that required me to persist through to evolve that aspect of character. Because I was focusing on persistence, I was reading about it, I wanted to develop further. What I didn't know is that because of my focus and my willingness to develop more persistence, I will be facing situations that will cause me to become more persistent. So I was struggling, I was challenged, and those difficulties caused me to build persistence. And the same happened with all those lessons in the 16 Law of Success by Napoleon Hill. I believe it's very important to say that it's not only what we read, but how we read, how do we absorb it, how do we interact with that written word. Because in my case, I could hear my own voice when I was reading. It was very slow, almost like someone sits next to me and reads this out loud. So that's the pace of me learning, almost feels like conversation with the author. So I was hearing the red text, 
I was imagining those examples that were made and I was looking for analogies from my own life, the similarities. I wanted to understand and whenever I needed, I was making notes on the side. Like literally, I, I have my highlights in the PDF. I have notes on the side because I wanted to make connection with my own life experience, with what was described over there. Oh yeah, I remember. What he's talking about reminds me of this and this situation. So it really felt like a dialogue. I was responding to what I was reading and I was very slow in reading. So I could sink that in. No, so it could sink in and I could absorb it. And because there are like thousand, hundred something pages, I am not kidding. This took me over a year because I was not reading it every single day. I was reading it, maybe page two, three, maybe a whole chapter, but on, on a certain lesson. And then life was causing me to become what I was reading about. And that takes time. So I was really living through it, almost like a personal training, one-to-one -one with the author, with the content. And for me, it took over a year. It was maybe one year, two months, because I started in May 2015, and I finished like middle of summer in 2016. So I really felt like it grew with me. It was my journey going through the content. Another aspect of reading the books is to do the work when they, when the when the authors ask you to follow some steps, to do some do some exercises, to reflect in writing, or just ref reflect and answer some questions. It was very important for me to do that. I really had that dialogue, that interaction, and I was producing in response to those questions. I was bringing forth my own thinking in response to the exercises. It's very important to do the work. And if you journal, it will help you. If you prefer to record yourself as you're having a walk, you're walking a dog, and you're just recording your voice notes, and you think out loud, think through some things, it counts as well. The important aspect was reflection and really fitting this into your life, ad ad adjusting. There are some things that are evergreen, some truths and wisdom that we can derive from this writing. And it's our job to be critical thinkers and critical readers and apply to us what makes sense to us and we perceive as beneficial. So it's our job to derive value from it. In this way, reading really changed my life. So Napoleon Hill, 16 Laws of Success or Law of Success in 16 Lessons, this is something that created the character, the aspirational model of who I am as a person to myself and also who I become towards others. Great foundation. It doesn't mean that you should go and read Napoleon Hill's 16 Laws of Success. Of course you can. Of course I do recommend that. But I don't know you that well. I want you to base your choice on who you are. So if you know of someone who inspires you with their life story, read the biography of this person. Or maybe there's someone in your life currently that inspires you, that who they are as a person is who you want to become and you want to learn from them and seek mentorship and invite them for tea, lunch, have them as your friends in your life. Like make, make sure that you are learning from those who figure out something that you are on the way to figure out. It will really save your time. Another creation, another book that really deeply inspired me and sh shaped me who I am, and not only me, also some of my coaching clients at that time, was the book by David C.M. Carter called Breakthrough. Breakthrough had lots of exercises, like I think there were like 25 or more different exercises to do. It was self-coaching. It was work that you do with yourself as a coach towards yourself. I loved it. You could do it whenever you were receptive to be 
introspective and that interaction worked exactly like the book by Napoleon Hill, well, Loss of Success I was reading, but that was condensated and it was very holistic, different angle. And I believe there are so many books out there that are like journal materials, exercise books, something for you to interact with and do the work, reflect, answer questions about your goals, about your passions, discover things about yourself. The breakthrough was actually self-discovery work. And when I described the the learnings and the value of the book to one of my clients, he was like, yeah, I would love to. He took the book, he flipped through it and said, yeah, sure, this is fantastic. He bought the book. And I know that for some coaching clients, this is exactly the kind of the book that will trigger those breakthroughs self-discoveries. So here my recommendations is again, not specific to this book by David C.M. Carter. What I'm talking about is the kind of the book. It's the nature of the work that you will be doing with yourself when you create time for it. It's self-coaching that is guided by the instructions in the exercises that you find in the book like that. And again, I did that kind of work in 2016. So if I want to give you another example, then it would be, for example, something like this. The subtle art of not giving a journal. So I really think that some of you can find that valuable. Other people can go for something more stoic journal of stoicism by somebody else, like You do your choice based on who you are and what resonates with you. But this is the type of work that I do recommend. It's a deeply introspective, interactive, guided self-coaching in writing. So you will keep the record of that and you can always go back to it. You can do those exercises after some time again, because we develop what you're doing today, five years from now, you would answer certain questions and do the exercises differently. The third type of content that really shaped me as a person and empowered me was Life Mapping by Brian and Sanjeta Main. Back then in 2014, my, my mentor, my coaching supervisor, and also supervisor of my research on young executive coaches back then, Dr. David T gave me this book and he knew that I will derive so much value from it. It really shaped how I envisioned things because life mapping is about drawing your goals so that your subconscious mind will follow through because of the symbolism, because of the colors, because of the meaning you put in the illustrations of what you want in your life. So you can map your life, what you want in the future. You can also map your values or reminders to yourself of who you are. So in the moments when you really need reminder of who you are and what you stand for, you just look at this image and you break through. The skill of drawing your goals, creating colorful vision is something that I went deeper into in this video. In that video, I was drawing one of the aspects of life that I want to bring to reality and setting goals that are symbolic and communicate to me, not only at the level of words and like verbally, I will not be able to describe certain things that I can draw and I can put meaning in. And it's very insightful to know that you don't have to have skills to draw, but you need to want to communicate to yourself in colors and shapes and symbols what you really want. So that's my third recommendation. It's a type of a skill, acquiring a skill to envision what you want and capturing that in a drawing that you keep close, that you look at something that is in your life. We all would need reminder sooner or later. Things, things happen, life becomes too busy. We need reminders that we can go back to and, and see what we are standing for. Who are we to ourselves? Where are we heading? 
those reminders are needed. So make sure that you have your tools to reconnect with who you are. If you think that it's a good start to have a look at those positions that I mentioned, that is Napoleon Hill, Law of Success in 16 Lessons, David C. M. Carter, Breakthrough, and Life Mapping by Brian and Sanjita Main. I hope you will bring better ideas for what suits you and what you can do that really fits in those three categories. Aspirational, introspective, highly visual, happy discoveries.